This is the new base of operations that you're seeing now, or at least this corner of it anyways. And I didn't get to make this, I didn't get a chance to make this video when I was still in Japan, but I wanted to. This is, uh, this is an important thing to do, talk about fond memories, because give it a year or two, give it several months, and you can forget a lot. So this will be a way for me, you know, to stoically journal in some sense. Um, the awesome times that I had while I was in Japan and now that they've all come to an end um, aside from perhaps visits back and so on so I was thinking about it what would end up in this you know I don't know if I do top 10 or whatever typically uh, YouTube sort of thing to list these but I've got a few to recall for sure uh, so where to start I'll, I'll jump into the time stream randomly, I guess, but I can likely give it an exact, you know, we'll situate it as well, even if it's in random. So I think a lot of um, my favorite, my favorite memories, for sure, a lot of them at the beginning uh, would have to do with trying to learn Japanese. Uh, and the sort of people that I met as a result of that, maybe most specifically, if I were talking about my teachers, and the story that I love to tell for how awesome this woman was uh, that I met is when I first arrived after about a month or so, this is when I was in Sanmu in this little town in Chiba Prefecture next to the ocean. And I asked the company Interact if uh, they could find for me some kind of lessons that I could do. And they looked into it to their credit and they found me some place. It was at a community center that I could go to and I got there and was, like you might expect, immediately overwhelmed because these are people who have been studying for a while. I'm thrown into the middle of that group and this is my first exposure other than a couple of just bare level grammar books that I glanced at before I had come. And so everyone's better than me and everybody's writing hiragana. There's kanji and there's hiragana in Japan and hiragana is the one that's purely phonetic. It's not pictographic. Uh, like kanji is, but it's still 26 characters that you've probably never looked at before. And that makes it uh, difficult to know what to do. <laughs> and you have people, of course, I went in, I sat down, and you've got that one real nasty person next to you that's like making a point of the fact that you don't know so much. And saying how, oh my god, you don't know katakana, or you don't know hiragana yet. I'm like, I've been here for like five days, of course I don't know. Um, but that soured the experience, to say the least, and I was like, oh, okay, I just got to find a different way. And I left the class, and when I was leaving, this uh, woman trailed me out, and she said, you know, why, why are you taking off? What happened? How is the class going? And I said, I think this is just very clearly not my level. I've got to find a different way to start learning because uh, I'm too far behind these people. And so she spent this time with me uh, out in the community center that it took place in, doing basic vocabulary she was like oh it's not that hard to learn like check this out you know like what's this in english and i was like here and she was like that's coco <laughs> i was like okay and it turned into like a fun thing it, it felt as though i was maybe in elementary school again like learning the most basic facts uh but with her it was really nice and i so appreciated the effort that she came out to kind of read the air see what was happening when uh i left the class and I had a great experience with her there. I was like, I still don't know if I'm going to do the lesson. And I went home. And then within a day, I got a call from my company. And they said that that teacher had contacted them and said that if I would like uh, private lessons, that she could come to my house and teach me there and get it on my level. Which was how, how kind, like how do, how do you measure that degree of kindness that someone would so go out of their way uh, to make my life better was real cool, <laughs> really, really cool. And I went on to have incredible memories with her. Um, we went to the, we went to this, I don't, when I was a kid, maybe I went to some museums, but not as an adult. And we went to this hyperrealism museum. That's the whole theme of the thing. It was called the Hokey Museum, I believe. And we went to these parks and she took me to this Kyoto it was in Ibaraki, but like Kyoto style, like in a garden, beautiful meal. 
all these things with her. There was even one very, um, she just had so much personality. There was one cool moment where we were riding in her car and I noticed she listened to a lot of jazz. And uh, I asked who was playing at this time because it was like very good music. Uh, and I pointed to the CD that I assumed, CD case that I assumed it was from, also a CD case. Uh, that's like just on the tail end of my era, but clearly in hers. Uh, and she says, oh, in response to my question, who is that? Uh, it's just a selfish man. And so very clearly, this was some kind of cool, jazzy relationship that she had had in the past. And she li still listened to this guy's music um, while they had, you know, concluded their intimate relationship. I was like, that is just the most hopelessly <laughs> romantic thing I've, I've ever seen. And I enjoyed that too. And to top off memories with her, it would be she took me one time for this, like, let's just go up the coastline of Chiba because Chiba is the prefecture along the ocean. And we went on this, uh, yeah, just this cool car ride for a whole day exploring along the coast. Incredible. And with her, I saw when she took me to some park in spring, the first, uh, what is it they call it? Sakura Fubuki? I'm probably butchering that, but it's the, it's like a cherry blossom blizzard and it happens during spring where I think it's later when they're in full bloom, but then they're starting to loosen their hold on the buds or not the buds, but loosen their hold on the branches. And if the wind picks up, it's this storm of, um, cherry blossoms that get swept up by it. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I remember being uh, physically moved by it, certainly, uh, when I saw it for the first time, and that was with her, so I had that association. And as well, I believe in this same spring, uh, she had invited me to a springtime festival that was next to a lake, and I met all these retired teachers that were her friends, and we got uh, inebriated <laughs> to a degree which in my more recent years, I don't think would be wise. Uh, but it was amazing. Uh, we, we were drinking and enjoying all this barbecue, which was adjacent to the lake. And then we wandered down as the fireworks were starting, like suitably toasty. And it was one of the most beautiful, I can't, I'll use that word a lot in this, but it's because it's genuine. And one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And as the fireworks are going off, ringing the lake are all these cherry blossom trees. And so, you have the fireworks going off above the cherry blossom trees at night lit up from underneath uh, by all of these food stalls that are called yatai, which are like these festival food stalls that are ubiquitous throughout Japan during any sort of festival season. And I just had a time of it walking under the cherry trees, uh, playing rock, paper, scissors, junkin. Uh, to win chocolate bananas with sprinkles on them. And I won like three times in a row after roughly half a bottle of whiskey. So I thought incredible prowess and was a core memory of mine from Japan. So that was great. That's just thinking of her. Um, other, other things I'd have to say, it's like a lot of it ends up being, uh, this video is kind of an, an homage to, to a lot of people because it's as a result of meeting those people that I was able to do these things. I would not have find my, found my way to them myself. Um, another one would be more recently in Kyoto, this, uh, this great fellow I met there um, who loves to travel. That friend that I met in Kyoto was always doing all sorts of cool stuff. He was going to um, explore lots of Japan where I had never been and on a few occasions, he invited me to actually go with him. And it made sure that I had one of the quintessential experiences of Japan, which is to go to one of these onsen towns. Like I'm a huge fan of the, the sentos, the, the public baths or, that they have there. And they have these towns dedicated to them where it is it is exactly what you do, where you robe up and you get on, I can't remember the name of the uh, kind of relaxing outfit that you have, but this relaxing outfit with these cool big baggy sleeves that you can store things in, and you wander around for the day going to all these different natural 
hot springs and the views were incredible you'd be next to like a hot spring waterfall <laughs> uh in amidst the bamboo forests and it was cool the way they were set up was to indicate what temperature was in each section depending on where the source was coming from and if you were really brave there were these super hot ones that you could check out and of course we we had to go to some unbelievable restaurants and I'll never forget there was this this one in particular uh, it was it had simple items on the menu like it would say ham but then this place so elevated, just thinking about it now, it's driving me crazy, so elevated the ham to another level that it need, it need not be anything other than its basic form. It was so delicious. Um, going to that is one of my like most amazing memories. Uh, there, there's, there, there is, a, in fact, probably too many to count, and I don't care about this video being long, but it's, it's funny when you really get into it. It makes me feel good about the having gone there on the whole, that there is so much to recall. Uh, returning now, jumping back in the time stream to more when I had first arrived, and the experiences I had at the first school that I taught at were, it was very special to me because that was the only position that I held here. Um, actually, that's not true. I held it in two, two different places. Uh, but it was the first time that I held a position consecutively that I could see those kids when they started, so this is in a middle school, see them from when they started to then go on and graduate. So that was cool. You were like a consistent presence in their lives, and so it was more than just the, the assistant teacher who showed up and left for a year. And I, I appreciated that a great deal, and even it's the only time I ever did this in Japan, but... Um, actually, I kind of did it again at this other school, but slightly different. I wrote a farewell speech, uh, and I did so in Japanese, and that was intimidating up in a formal Japanese ceremony. At the, it was like their graduation, and you have to do this with the way you approach the stage, all these like little actions of etiquette that take place. Um, and then to get up there and speak in front of an entire school uh, when... My Japanese has never been that great, and so that was, that was fairly intimidating. Uh, but it did help in that a lot of what I wrote was quite emotional stuff, but because it was in a foreign language, I had a bit of a disconnect from what I was actually saying, so managed to quite stoically uh, make my way through the entire thing. But everyone appreciated that. I could, like, a bunch of the kids were crying and stuff, so I was like, oh, gotcha, that was good. Uh, <laughs> That, that was an amazing memory. Um, if I think about just the different places that I've gone, I have to say as well, it still continues, in fact, and is a part of what I'm doing now uh, with the company and Radiant and Chronicle and stuff. But it was when I moved to... Here's a great memory. This should be a memory in and of itself that is hyper, like, recall this for all time. It was when I was at the end of those three years, at the beginning, this initial portion of the time stream, where... I knew I'd finally accumulated enough experience and I'd made videos to this effect in the three years that I was there saying that uh, teaching for Interact is a finite position, their business model is turnover, and I didn't know that though, I had to find it out myself, I never saw any YouTube videos or anything, uh, and I realized that I needed a change, uh, this had to evolve. And so I was looking around for work and I could not find anything, and then here's where the one of the best memories of being in Japan came in, I got a message from a subscriber at that time, and they said, hey, I like the videos that you do. Uh, I'm up in Ibaraki. I know you're down in Chiba, but I'm a direct hire. I work directly for the Board of Education, and we have positions opening up, and if you'd like, I could be your reference. And I thought, holy shit, you don't even, you don't even know me. I guess you kind of do, but this is great generosity to put your uh, reputation on the line for a guy that you have to believe or have confidence that what you've seen on the internet is accurate. Otherwise, uh, if I'm some other alter ego, that would be really bad for your work. But he trusted me and was this reference for me up in Ibaraki. And then I went and taught there for four years 
And it was funny going into the interview because they're like, oh, you're so-and-so's friend. And I was like, we'll say, we'll say Victor's. You are Victor's friend. I was like, yes, I am. We are, we go way, way, way back. <laughs> um, getting that position was this huge upgrade financially. Uh, so exciting because I got to stay in Japan. I was starting to wonder if at that point, just after the three years, uh, am I going to have to go back or do something else because I can't work for this dispatch company anymore. Um, and so that's a like core memory of mine for the whole experience. And then from that came the group of people I met there all played, dun not all, but there was a, a group, an inner group that played Dungeons and Dragons. And I'd, since I was a kid, wanted to play this, but of course it was so expensive, you needed all these books and all this time investment uh, that was impossible when I was a kid. And so it felt like, oh, finally I get an opportunity to do this thing uh, that was so interesting to me when I was like young kid, about 10 years old, but couldn't do for uh, prohibitive costs and so on. Um, I got to do it with that group. And when you consider now, I'm doing a whole business around trying to create a storytelling assistant for tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons, um, that it's got to be one of the most important and best. And so we had so many different sessions where we played together there. It was, while I lived in Ibaraki, one of the great uh, shining things that brought us all together and unified us in glorious purpose. Uh, I enjoyed it so much. Another, this leads me to another, I can see as my, my brain's just like revisiting these areas. Another huge one, it has to be mentioned, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch I miss, but uh, running the marathon, I never never in my life uh, in Canada ever attempted anything like that before. And while I was in Ibaraki, the kind of closest major city to me was Mito. And Mito had a yearly marathon that they've been doing for a couple of years. And I thought, I've always been a runner, this seems like a thing that you got to do if you ever called yourself that. Uh, you know, none of this half marathon nonsense. No offense to those who run those. They're actually quite challenging. Uh, but I'm going to go for this full marathon. And the training leading up to the experience itself was, again, one of the coolest things I've ever done. Where there was a track near Mito that was this rubberized track, which was great for training on because it meant that I didn't have to destroy my knees. And I just put in the kilometers there. Uh, eventually doing half marathons before the marathon uh, to really see where my limits were and succeeding, getting through them. A couple of days though, you, you get this unique experience where you run for so long and exhausted your glycogen and any sort of uh, means of generating energy that your legs just give out. That Those were interesting training moments, which I'm glad to have. I didn't break anything when I kind of stumbled. Uh, but incredible to finish, tremendous to finish that. And I know this is kind of a funny thing, but I'm like, everybody should run a marathon at least once in their life. I think you should do one. Uh, you could get support and all sorts of cool experiences from many, many different things. But I think this is a great one for doing something where I don't know if it's just Japan, but I feel like this is likely most marathons. The public support for these events make you feel like a superhero while you're running them because it's if it's a popular marathon it's just people lining the streets for 42 kilometers telling you you can achieve it and you can do it and i mean i know they're strangers but we're creatures that you know we're influenceable creatures like you can just tell us good job and it doesn't matter who says it to us we're like thank you stranger that feels amazing and you get this for the entire experience of it uh the support was the most remarkable thing. I would say uh, not even the running, although that was um, brutal and crippling and challenging, but it was what really caught my attention as I did it was the support of the public that came out when you were doing this marathon and how good it made you feel. Um, also core to this memory is getting to, I thought the marathons were 40 kilometers and my legs were about ready to crack and I got to 40 and I was like, I made it. And it was like another two kilometers to go. And I was ready to die. That was a, a rude awakening. Um, I also appreciate how difficult these mar marathons are in the sense that a couple of years later, still in Ibaraki, I tried to do the marathon again and I couldn't do it. 
I didn't train properly and I kind of knew that as I was training. Um, but to complete a marathon the first time that I did it, that was very, very cool. Um, never forget that. Maybe I could still do it again, but I like working out and I like my knees. And so you have to think long-term with these things. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it for sure, but I think carefully on it. The marathon was incredible. Um, what is another? Let's just jump to a different point further along. Uh, at the tail end of when I lived in Ibaraki, uh, going to Akita, and I have a video for it on my channel. It, it is, in my life, one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Um, definitely, definitely. If you're just going to go somewhere and it feels like you've walked through the magical wardrobe in Narnia, uh, this would qualify for that. It's, it's tremendous, again. Uh, the, the rice fields, you can see it actually, that's the great thing, is that I talk about it now, but I feel the video I made for it does a good job of showing you just how special this place is. Uh, it has the deepest lake in Japan, I believe it's called Tazawako, and it's this lapis blue, that kind of almost Caribbean blue, but surrounded by what feels like uh, west coast rainforest kind of trees. It's gorgeous and we did not when i went there we did not take the toll roads which is an option we drove instead we took my little k car and we purposely not just to save money but i was like i want to see the raw off the beaten path cliche nobody treads these paths uh course that would lead us there and it was this, some people would, you know, that expression, descent into madness. This was an ascent into idyllic nature, where every half hour that passed, the closer you got to Akita, the more, uh, the more resplendent it became. I, lo I loved it. It's like, it really is some, lots of our, li our lives can feel like dreams, but this among uh, the greatest moment where I was like, I don't even know if I'm awake right now uh, for parts of that trip. When I, when I took it. Um, more fond memories. Again, I don't care about this going long, so let's have a little bit of uh, fun with it. Definitely that I got to become a licensed teacher. Um, that was something I, I had no sense of, or I had some intention uh, to, to actually become a licensed teacher here in that I had applied for a master's degree at one point that I was going to do long distance, but got rejected from the program. I don't have a very good GPA. It was still worth it though, right? You still try. Um, but I, you know, I was like, okay, if I'm not going to be able to uh, get a master's degree, then a university job isn't probably going to happen. Um, so I probably won't become a licensed teacher, but then uh, this could become a part of my like worst memories of Japan, which will obviously perform better than this one because the internet is what it is. Uh, but I got fired from Ibaraki. Um, real cool, like blade in the back. Uh, what would I say? House of Dragons politicking going on there. So I could talk about that for another juicy video. Um, my school was amazing though at that time. I had a lot of great support from people when that happened. And it was one of these moments where something really shitty became something amazing because when I got fired from uh, the Ibaraki Board of Education, it meant that I went to this school, see current tangent we're in now, uh, that sponsored any teachers there to become licensed teachers so that you could have your own classroom and they so prioritized English there that every single grade had an advanced group and the advanced group usually had some, not, it was, a, it was scattershot, but you had groups that were like bilingual within these advanced groups. And I got, since it was a junior high school, high school, I got the first years of the advanced group and there were kids within that class that were fully bilingual and I got my license and so I could teach them as my own class. It was a focus class of six students uh, that I think for many teachers, that's like the dream, right? A small focus class of very capable students that are eager to learn, uh, which these for the most part were, um, and wonderful personalities. I really enjoyed getting to know them. Yeah. 
not not always calm seas, but that's raising kids. That's how it is. Um, that experience, as a result of a negative experience, was incredible, and I'm so grateful for. And the people there were really good too. I made some lifelong friends. I think uh, people who I don't know when our paths can cross again, but. I would love to see them again. Um, this is, uh, this is, as I said earlier, it's making me realize just how much uh, quality experience I had while I was here. Um, what else could I go on to say? It, it must be said, when I spent the last year and a half in Kyoto, there was a group of friends I had at one time there that we we did, here it could go on for like hours, but we, we enjoyed some incredible things together, um, snowboard experiences, uh, up to, I believe it's called Nozawa Onsen, where you're snowboarding on this, uh, geographically or topographically really interesting mountain with all these small bushes. And just for somebody like me in snowboarding, I'm not like a park rat. I want to go out and cruise through interesting landscapes. Nozawa Onsen was perfect for that. Such interesting landscapes, the way the hills rolled down, dropped off, flattened out, uh, good snow. And then within this snowboard town, you you had all these onsens. That's why it's called Nozawa Onsen. It's an onsen town slash ski mountain. And I love many parts of Japanese culture, but their mountain culture, the like go up, snowboard, come back, big thing of ramen. Yeah, that's that's a good experience. Um, I did that with that group of friends. We would go over for these epic walks through Kyoto. I love hiking. Um, we one of prob maybe one of my top three videos I ever made was from adventures that I did with them, um, and it, it was unforgettable. The things that we did together, without expanding too far. Like we went to another we went to another onsen town called Arima Onsen. Uh, we went to this snowboarding a couple times. Uh, we went up to, um, we went up to these beautiful mountains around Kyoto. Uh, those were incredible. Um, in terms of achievements, I guess you know what? What am I? What am I thinking? Like I should say it as well as this exists. Uh, this YouTube channel. One of the the best memories I have um, has been the the reactions to certain videos. Um, a guide for letting go. That was one I did a while ago. Um, perhaps in my peak frenzy of creativity, I'd like to return to something like that in terms of output. Um, people's reactions to that. Uh, the fact that I was approached at one point by one of the most like boutique real estate uh, groups in Kyoto uh, to create a documentary for their traditional townhomes that are disappearing. Um, that I was able to go to Hiroshima for filming, um, all the experiences I had in Hiroshima. Um, now, okay, this is great. I'm glad I remembered this. I was like, how could it not get into here? Um, I have a great friend who, it's crazy to think that this is over now because it had that feeling of being eternal where after I was in Japan for a little while, my good friend Russ who's been in a few videos, he would come and he visited me for like, I don't know, five years straight during Golden Week, which is this, uh, it's like the most popular holiday in Japan and it occurs in spring. And returning now, we're jumping back in the time stream again to that first Japanese sensei that I had. Um, she recommended that I go to this place called Nikko and I went there with Russ and you can see Tokugawa Ieyasu's tomb, who is a central figure to uh, Japanese history in terms of unifying the country. And it is again in these towering uh, kind of West Coast rainforest like cedar trees and spruce and stuff. I think it's spruce. There's these elaborate golden shrine temple that has been built uh, for Tokugawa. And it's gorgeous. This is a specifically incredible memory of having uh, my, my friend here, but this is kind of an homage of all the years that he came out to visit me uh, were, were some of the, the best 
I had ever known, and I was always a little choked up when uh, his his visit would end and then he'd have to go back to Canada. Um, that was that was incredible. Um, yeah, there's too many to count. I almost as as I do this now and I look at let me see how much time has passed. A lot of time. Perhaps this can be uh, maybe an ongoing series it's because I don't want to make this like a 40 minute video or something like that. But um, there's just so much. There's so much. And there's, of course, the risk. Uh, I'm going to leave something out. I'm going to miss mentioning something I love to do with someone and that may cause harm that I don't intend. Uh, so I should return to this video series uh, that I can make sure I cover all that ground. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, walk down memory lane with me. Uh, if you've ever been to Japan, I know quite a few people have, and in fact, a lot of people uh, who are watching these videos, or still do, uh, they they live in Japan now. So I'd love to hear, like, just tell me your, your good memories from Japan, or even, let's just say travel. Let's say travel. Um, I'll be doing, now that I've moved to Bangkok and there's the whole new business and everything like that going on, I'll be, uh, I'll be informing of those next steps uh, really soon. I'll be made, I've got the video list, uh, but I wanted to get this one out first. I was like, I got to put that pin in Japan and say why it was so, such a good experience for me when I was there. But now it's Bangkok, now it's Thailand, now it's Radiant and trying to get this business off the ground. Uh, so there'll be uh, lots to do with how that's going. And I can say just from the the time spent around Bangkok already, what a vibrant, incredible, amazing people, amazing city, gritty, um, beautiful, all of it. It's all the adjectives. Well, that's it for this one. Love to hear from you down in the comments. I'll be uh, cranking these out with greater regularity. Uh, since this is all full-time, it's Radiant in the channel. That's what's going on now for the next six months. Um, if you consider supporting me on Patreon, I'd really appreciate that. That's uh, how the business is going to work here because we're basically, uh, yeah, we are self-funded. Um, but we're going to do the best we can with that as well. You take care, and I'll see you soon.